What's up guys, welcome back to Star Citizen and the Verse and welcome back to my Star Citizen 2022 Beginner's Guide series here on my channel. In this video we're going to be talking about bounty hunting and the basics of it. We're going to cover everything you need to know when getting started and what I would recommend you take with you. We'll talk about reputation and what it does to your bounty hunting contracts. And also we'll go through some mission variations in the video as well and take a look at them. And if you're new to the verse, guys, and you're or you're just you know getting started or thinking about getting the game, then do check out the rest of the Star Citizen 2022 Beginners Guide here on my channel. There's a link at the top of the video or down below in the comment section or in the description. And if you're a veteran of the verse and I've missed anything or you can add anything to what I've said, then please do leave a comment down below and help any new players join in the verse. But anyway. That's enough chatting, let's get on and take a look at the bounty hunting basics. Before we take a contract, we're actually going to open our Moby Glass with F1 if you didn't know how to do that. Navigate to your contract manager and scroll down or select the mercenary section, not bounty hunting just yet. In the mercenary section, you'll find a mission called A Call to Arms. It's available no matter where you are in the verse. And you want to pick that up kind of no matter what you're doing really because every time you take out an enemy player or an npc or a ship if any of them have got a chrome stat you're going to get bonus alpha uec from it varying from 500 to a thousand alpha uec depending on their chrome stat level and when you're doing your bounty hunting missions you're going to want this ticking over in the background because obviously on top of your reward from doing your actual bounty contract you're doing you're also going to gain extra cash every time you take out an enemy ship or an enemy player again depending on their chrome stat level so go ahead and accept your a call to arms mission and once you've done that you can then click untrack on the bottom and that will take the objective off your hud on your main screen and that way when you accept your bounty hunter mission that's what will appear instead Next, go back to the general tab of your contract manager and go down to Bounty Hunter. And in there, you will find Bounty Hunting Contracts, of course. So the first thing to probably mention is that you're going to have contracts from different factions. Bounty Hunters Guild is one faction. They're sort of the main, obviously, bounty hunting uh, faction. And then you'll also find missions from your local security force. That's obviously determined on where you are in Stanton. Right now you can see it says Blackjack Bounty Troll Contract beneath the one I've got selected. And that is from Blackjack Security, which are the local security in our corp. Now every time you complete a contract for a faction, you're going to gain reputation. And every time you gain reputation, it goes towards ranking up with that faction. Different factions offer different things for their ranks. Um, for the local security, every time you get to a certain rank, you're going to gain a percentage increase on your contract payout, your reward for doing the contract. With the Bounty Hunters Guild, once you get so many contracts under your belt for the Bounty Hunters Guild, you're going to get a rank up with them, of course, and then they're going to offer you a higher level permit certification, another assessment to see if you can handle a higher risk target. So the first one you're going to get, which you can get almost straight away, um, if not straight away, is the very low risk target uh, certification. Once you complete it, it's then going to unlock the ability to get very low risk targets from your local factions. The other thing you need to know when selecting your contract is that if you take a mission from the Bounty Hunters Guild, you could be sent anywhere at the moment within Stanton, although I'm guessing eventually they will give you a mission anywhere in the verse. Your local security force, in my case for this video, Blackjack Security, are going to give me a mission obviously local. So it will be within the R Corp space. And obviously if you took a mission from the Hurston Security, you'll be in Hurston. If you took it from Crusader Security, you'll be within Crusader and so on. Once you accept a mission, go to your map and you'll find somewhere on your map and little icon saying target location it's a bluey tealy sort of color click on it and then click set re if it doesn't work like it is in this example then all you need to do is select the nearest planet to the target location in this case it's hurston 
it will give you the waypoints over to Hurston or the planet you've selected. Once you get to the planet, you can then open your map and reset the location to the target location. So this mission is the very low risk target certification mission for the Bounty Hunter Guild. And I really recommend as soon as these pop up, you go ahead and do them. Um, the very low risk target one is super easy. You will see there's just two targets here. Well, one's the target, one's his escort. And they're both little light fighters. And the Mustang or the Aurora will be perfectly adequate for taking these targets out. So no need to worry about that. But the quicker you get up this ladder on the Bounty Hunter Guild, the quicker you're going to be earning good money from it. Uh, and with your call to arms bonus on the top, you know, it's a really, really good earner, like I've said before. So you really do want to get the certification missions done as soon as they pop up. And it doesn't take very long to get up to the harder missions for the good money. Um, and you know you don't have to go all the way up to the top if you you know you're not not comfortable you can just leave the certifications at a certain level although I would recommend you just do them if you can and then when you're selecting your missions you just avoid the ones you think you struggle with um, and practice makes perfect guys so the more you do them the better you're gonna get so a couple of things you probably need to know when you do go bounty hunting so uh, before we talk about um, some of the things to keep an eye on, on your dashboard i just want to talk about movement movement is really important it's gonna help you um a lot surviving bounties and it's probably i feel like when i've spoke to people that struggle or been with people that are struggling um it's the thing that normally catches people out uh, people fall into the trap of treating this like a flight simulator like you was you know playing a world war ii flight simulator chasing a Messerschmitt in your Spitfire kind of thing. It doesn't work like that. It's a, it's not a flight simulator. It's a space simulator. And in space, things are completely different. Um, you've got many different directions you can move at, um, and all at once, really. Um, so bear that in mind. And really, what you want to be doing is just being as erratic as possible. That's what I find is the best thing to do. So, you know, while you're trying to keep your target locked, obviously, um, you know, you should be thrusting up using spacebar and moving off to one side as well while you're engaging. That way it kind of helps um, stop you falling into the trap of getting into a joust, basically. Um, and if they do charge at you, you know, you're moving away from them. You're not going straight towards them in a straight line. You're moving up. You're moving away at an angle. Um, and that's really important. Just keep moving, moving different directions, keeping different angles going. Uh, one thing I lack that I need to improve on is that I need to roll more, but I just get dizzy. <laughs> I guess. I don't know why I don't do it. But I need to roll more. So if you combine the different directions and angles with rolling, you know, you're making yourself a really hard target to hit. You are going to get hit, of course, but you're going to limit that damage. And like I said, mostly you're going to not get stuck in the trap of just following behind the target like you're chasing a plane on a flight simulator or, and you're not going to fall into the trap of getting stuck in a joust. Um, that's a big thing I see a lot of people saying when they struggle with bounties. Oh, I always end up the NPC charging at me head on. That's because the person um, in question isn't moving away at angles. They're not using the different directions. They're just flying straight at their target trying to take them out and you can't do that uh, in Star Citizen for sure and probably in most space simulators. Another couple of really handy buttons to know are H and J. They deploy your countermeasures, so if you get missiles locked on you, that's what you're going to want to use to try and get out of trouble. And this is the noise you'll hear if you do get a missile lock on you. And talking of taking damage, let's touch briefly on the shields. So on your dashboard or your HUD on the left side of the screen on my ship, on this Mustang, you can see um, a picture of my ship with some... Um, lines around it, four lines around it. They represent your shield and obviously your ship, your ship. Once them lines have gone, your shield is gone and you're on the hull of your ship and your hull won't last long in most situations. So you want to keep your shields charged. As you take damage, the lines are going to get smaller and smaller. Eventually they'll start turning red. Once they turn red, they'll get smaller still and then they'll completely be gone. Once they're gone, like I said, you're on your hull. So before you get to that point really you want to be keeping an eye on your your shields as they're getting low once they're going red kind of thing you want to get out of there you want to boost away from your target and you don't have to run away it's a tactical withdrawal you're just gonna boost away give your shields a couple of seconds to start recharging and as long as you're not taking damage your shields will recharge and you can then go back to target re-engage and finish the job Another panel to keep your eye on is the target panel. 
That's the one on the bottom right of my screen right here. And you can see it taking damage. You'll see his shields go like yours from a big thick line all the way down to nothing. Or go red before they go to nothing, I should say. And um, once they're gone, you can see the hole taking damage. And you'll be able to see this all the way through until he explodes. Your target shield works just like yours as well. So if you miss or they stop taking damage, their shields will slowly regenerate. And you'll have to take their shields down again. So once you've done your very low risk target assessment for the Bounty Hunters Guild, that will allow you to then go on and do them particular missions for local security forces. So in my case, in this video, that was Blackjack Security. Now not all the missions you do, um, like the one we were just viewing in space in the asteroid belt, will be in an asteroid belt or out in space. They might be on a planet or on a moon. Um, in which case, there is something else you need to keep an eye on, and that is your altitude. Especially if it's night time, it's really hard, and I've done it many, many times. I've not realised what altitude I was at, and even though I thought I was high up in the air, I've actually just slammed into a mountain and exploded. So do keep an eye on your altitude. Um, but this mission right here, this is one of the lo local security missions for blackjack security and this was a very low risk target and you can see it's really simple nice and easy with a mustang to take him out so the last two missions we looked at that were in the background of the video were your normal or what i would call normal bounty hunting missions ship to ship combat missions nowadays you can also find variations of fps missions and this is really important at 3.17 because well there's a few things we'll talk about in a moment but before you go and do an FPS mission, there's some stuff you need to make sure you've got beforehand. Some armor, a weapon or weapons. Now, I would say definitely a backpack. And also, probably most importantly, a medical device. Once you've got your armor, weapons, backpack and a medical device, you just need to equip it. If you didn't know, you open your inventory of I and um, anything in your local inventory, you'll be able to drag and drop onto your character. So, FPS missions. This one I'm doing here is a bunker mission. As you can see, I approach and I immediately start getting lit up like a Christmas tree by the bunker defences, that being turrets. They will target you, they will hit you, they will destroy your ship. So, once you can spot somewhere to land, like I picked this ridge, make your way to it as quick as you can, get into cover and get out of your ship. As long as your ship's in cover, they won't be able to destroy it. If you leave it poking out or somewhere the, the turrets can target it, they will destroy it when you're down in the bunker. So make sure it's hidden well. Once you've landed, make your way into the bunker. It will be in the big central building, the entrance, and inside you will find an elevator. Take the elevator down into the interior of the bunker. And once you're inside, be very careful. Use as much cover as you can. You can use Q&E to lean, so you can lean out of cover if you want to. And um, there will be guards patrolling. They'll walk a little circuit. There will be guards standing in corners. There will be guards covering certain areas. Um, so be very careful. Be nice and slow. Um, don't rush through because you will get caught out. You'll run out into something that looks clear and there will be a guard stood in the corner behind a box or something and you'll just fall over and die. So be careful. They're not amazing NPCs. You know, they're working like a little bit clunky now and then, but they will kill you. Make no mistake about that. They will kill you. Um, these missions are so good now, um, not only because of, uh, well, the changes for 3.17 we'll talk about in a moment, but because with a call to arms, you can make a lot of money in these bunkers. Every time you take one of these targets out, you're going to get at least 500 alpha UEC, up to a thousand alpha uec so they're really really worthwhile just for that fact alone with all the uh, npcs you're going to take out on top of your completion of the mission you're going to make a nice chunk of change but now with 3.17 we have the ability to be able to sell things we've looted from the verse so you can loot corpses and you can loot crates you've been able to do that for a little while but what we haven't been able to do was sell the stuff we had picked up. So now not only do we make a lot of money from our uh, bonuses from a call to arms, not only do we make pretty good money from completing the contract uh, for the bounty in the bunkers, we'll also make extra money from selling the stuff we can loot. And all we do to loot stuff is hold F and right click on a corpse, it will bring up the options that you can see, and then you just select loot, 
it'll open up the inventory and you just drag and drop stuff from the inventory of the corpse over to your inventory and that's it you can drag stuff onto your backpack for example guns and stuff you can equip them onto your backpack to save space um, obviously different size backpacks have different space available so you're not going to be able to get for example a um, you know a full set of armor in a lightweight backpack um, so do bear that in mind and actually feeling brave enough what I would do is just wear the bare minimum I'd wear an undersuit and a helmet and a pistol and I would come down here and I would just try and collect items to equip myself with as I move through the bunker so that I can carry that little bit extra out to make some extra money um, you will find lootable crates around and even if they say ammo on them and you don't really want ammo open them because you will find inside attachments and modifications for your weapons you will find grenades you will also find actual guns so do check them out and you'll also find other random crates that could have anything in them including armor and edibles so really worth checking as much of the bunkers out as you can and seeing what uh, lootable crates you can find once you're finished make your way back to the elevator that you came down on it's the only way in and out head to the surface find your ship get back out into the verse go to a city or a station and sell all the stuff you've collected and hopefully for 3.17 you'll make a tidy little profit on top of completing your missions and your bonuses from a call to arms so uh, yeah i really think the fps bounties are going to be really worthwhile in 3.17 and once you're done head over to g-lock and have a little drink don't get too hammered though you've got to get back out into the verse and get collecting them bounties but there you go guys, I really hope the video is helpful, especially to newer players. If you're a veteran of the Verso, please do feel free to leave comments down below, giving any extra pointers, or maybe even inform me of something I didn't know about, that would be cool as well. And if you haven't already seen the Star Citizen 2022 Beginner's Guide playlist here on my channel, then do check that out. If you're a new player, hopefully it will be really helpful for you. You can find that in the description or the pinned comment in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Have fun in the verse, guys, and I will see you out there. Cheers.